Hello, all of my history-loving friends. I am Madame Morbid. I am your guide on any number of historical adventures. And today, I am in Dallas, Texas, in front of another Bonnie and Clyde site that is in somewhat danger of not being here much longer. This site, it was the home of Lily McBride, and this is extremely close to the former location of the Henry Barrow gas station. Lily McBride was Raymond Hamilton's sister. And in January of 1933, Raymond Hamilton was sitting in jail for the murder of John Butcher, a man he had not murdered. He had actually been in Michigan when that murder occurred, and Clyde felt really bad about that. He did not think someone should pay the price for a crime they didn't commit. He didn't always get along great with Raymond Hamilton, but he wasn't gonna let him sit in jail for something he didn't do. So Clyde had this idea that he was gonna sneak in something to help Ray break out. And his idea was to hide something inside a radio that could be delivered by Lily or another member of the family to Raymond in jail. And so in early January, he had been discussing this plan with her. Around the same time, Clyde had just the worst timing sometimes, and it wasn't necessarily his fault. But the crime community in Dallas wasn't a huge one, and so they all kind of knew each other. And the police were scoping this place out, hoping to catch Odell Chambliss. Chambliss had worked with Raymond sometimes, and his partner had sold him out, for a bank robbery and he had told the police that Chambliss sometimes came and visited this house and that if they waited here long enough eventually he would show up and they could catch him. January 6th 1933 a deputy comes to the house and he knocks on the door and he speaks to Lily. He probably asks her about Raymond but what he's really doing is he's scoping the place out. He doesn't want her to know that they are setting up an ambush for Chambliss. He leaves. Clyde shows up that afternoon. Now at this time, Lily has left and gone. I don't know where she went, but she doesn't come back for quite some time. He asks about her. He wants to know if she delivered the radio to her brother. Whether she had done that or not, I don't know. She's not home, so they go and they visit family. They probably go see his parents on Eagle Ford Road. They go see Emma. They may visit another friend while they're waiting for her to return. At 11 o'clock, the posse shows up, and it's a five-man posse. It's made up of Tarrant County Assistant District Attorney W.T. Evans, Special Ranger... J.F. Van Noy, Dallas County Deputy Sheriff Fred Bradbury, and two Fort Worth deputies, Dusty Rhodes and Malcolm Davis. Davis and Rhodes go around back to the yard area, and they are standing around the porch while the other three stay inside the house. Maggie Ferris is here. She is the younger sister of Lily and Raymond. She tells them Lily's not here, and they say, well, we're gonna set up our ambush anyway. And they just wait, and they're watching the road. They have her turn off every light in the house. She manages to talk them into letting her turn a red lamp on in the children's room. She tells them it's a nightlight that the children need. They allow her to do this, but actually what it is, it's a signal to anybody coming to the house that it's not safe, the law is here. They all see a Ford V8 drive by very slowly with no headlights. And the police assume that that's Chambliss checking the place out. Because they have seen that, they tell her, turn that light off. Bonnie and Clyde did see the light and they keep moving. But a little while later, they come back and this time the light is off. So they stop. Clyde gets out 
As Clyde approaches the front door, Maggie opens the door and yells, don't shoot, think of my babies. At which point, Clyde immediately fires his shotgun through the window. All three lawmen hit the ground. The layout of the interior may have changed since then, but the lawmen would have been in this general area here. The two lawmen in the back, Rhodes and Davis, run around the side of the building toward Clyde. Now Clyde, when he tries to shoot that second time, his gun jams and he's struggling trying to get the cartridge out to unblock it when they run forward and he gets it just in time to catch Malcolm Davis in the chest, almost point blank. So Davis would have been dead immediately. After he shoots Davis, the police inside start shooting and then WD starts wildly shooting just in their general direction. Clyde is able to slip away between some houses. He heads back toward Eagle Ford Road, toward his parents' house. WD is shooting wildly and Bonnie tells him, you know what, you're more likely to hit Clyde or an innocent bystander than, than anything else, so let's just stop. So they drive away, they go around the block, and they intercept Clyde and he gets in the car with them. Meanwhile back here, it's absolute bedlam. All of the neighbors have come out of their house to see what in the world is going on. The police are confused. They have no idea who they just had a shootout with. The police actually open fire on some neighbors who are coming to try to help Davis, who is down, and they're trying to get him to the hospital. Thank goodness they miss. They get him to the hospital, and of course, obviously, he doesn't make it. I'm actually surprised he was still alive, uh, if he was still somewhat alive. Lily gets home around 3 a.m. They arrest her as an accessory. And of course, they're trying to figure out what's going on, what just happened. And Clyde and Bonnie, they head out of town. Now, when they tell the story, they say they drive by his sister Marie, who is riding her bike that Clyde had just given her for Christmas. And every time Marie told the story, she never acted in any way like it was so weird for a child to be out riding their bike past midnight. So I don't know what was up with that. But that's the story of the death of Fort Worth officer Davis. He was just, uh, he was described as a super nice 51 year old bachelor. He adored fishing. He had this curly hair. Apparently his fish fries at his house were legendary in Fort Worth. Another amazing human being gone too soon. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and please subscribe to my channel. I'll see you next time.